and welcome to the Gussets and Godes podcast. My name is Christina and this is my podcast about my knitting, stitching and crafting. Um, welcome, <laughs> welcome back and thanks for being here with me today. Uh, we are just poking our head out the window there. Uh, it's a lovely day today, it is crisp and autumnal. I can see the autumn leaves just peeping at me from the outside. I think I'll go for a nice walk later but before that just wanted to jump on and show you what I've been crafting recently. So I've been working on having some items for autumn and winter. I showed you the last video I think it was my um, planning. Um, so the first thing I've made is a beret. some berry trouble in the past. Never quite managed it but this beret is the vintage tassel beret and it's by Tara Dayton Atelier and I bought it as a kit so I got the booklet of how to make it, how to make the tassel um also there was a little postcard um which is very nice and the yarn so um it didn't have a ball band um so i don't know what exactly the yarn is but i think it was listed as a synthetic mix and i did have to knit this berry twice admittedly I knit it the first time on the needles that were recommended. Um, what were they? Four millimeter. Yeah, four millimeter. Um, and I knew partially into it that it was going to be too big, but I just wanted to finish it and see how it would be. Then I unraveled the whole thing once I'd finished it <laughs> um, and knitted it in a 3.5. So I often do have a, um, a, loose te uh, a loose tension, so things do often turn out too big um, and I do have to step down. Also that pattern is based on the vintage pattern and so um, usually with vintage patterns you need quite a tight uh, gauge compared to modern patterns. And because it's a berry, it wants to hold that shape. Now it's knit flat, which if you saw me knit the green berry last time with a different pattern, you'll know I hated that about it. The reason I hated that on the previous berry was because you couldn't see anything except this big seam line. Now on this berry, I have done a shocking, shocking job. Of steaming it up and and yet still that's the seam it just like melds in and if I'd done a better job of seaming you really wouldn't see it but anyway you you knit it um, this part flat so you knit your headband the, the uh, moss stitch um, you do your increases you do a little bit of plain and then you do decreases, um, stitch it together and pop on the tassel. I really love the tassel. I think it makes the beret. It fits really well. And what I like about this beret is it's soft. It's not, I think I was trying in the past to get that, the French beret that's like boiled wool, like felt. Um, 
and you're just not going to get that with a knitted item you need that in a felted item so this has got a real nice softness to it um i kind of like these little i don't know what you call that just oh it's so cute and the back can you see that no let's <laughs> anyway it's just just what i was hoping for and i've been wearing it loads uh it is i still it's still a teensy bit bigger than what the measurements are on the pattern so what i did was i had i did bring it up to show you i bought some sharing elastic a while ago and so I ran the sharing elastic behind the pearl bumps three in three rows. Now, I also, I did have to do that twice. The first time that I did it, I drew this in to be smaller. And as I was wearing the hat, I ended up with a furious headache. I don't suffer with headaches. It was really weird. I realised it's because the hat was like strangling my head. That's why I can't wear Alice bands. I love those Alice bands that go across, but they just hit me in the wrong place too, like here, and they give me attention. <laughs> so, yeah, massive, massive fan of this pattern. I love that it was simple to do. I loved. Um, I love the end result. It was very addictive knitting it. Um, and I did not even mind having to pull it out and do it again. So um, this kit was the colour Cat's Tongue. And it's just perfect. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. I'm going to knit a few more in a few different colours. The yarn weight is a DK. And... Um, I think I definitely would still do the sharing elastic because this is moss stitch instead of uh, ribbing and I find moss stitch doesn't quite have that bouncy like recovery that you get so can you see these aren't creating like lines they're alternate alternating yeah um, you know ribbing is when they all go they all go in a line nicely so this is like more decorative it doesn't have as much bounce back so i think the showing elastic really makes a difference in fact hats in general often do stretch out that is one problem with knitting hats um so i think the showing elastic actually could be a good idea I'm wondering if yeah i think i would just i would do the showing elastic i think in future in any hats that i made um, as I'd like just after I'd made them I'd run it through be instead of waiting for them to stretch out because trying to bring it back is not the same as trying to like, maintain uh, so yeah I'm hoping that will maintain nicely it's not too tight this time and I just I love the tassel I love the tassel anyway um, actually Tara does quite a few kits uh, quite a few patterns um, she's got some sewing patterns and sewing guides which look really cool and um, she also has a podcast and I really love her videos I particularly liked her vlogtober um, and what's the channel I think it's the same name yeah still Tara Data Natalia there's all her yeah there she is over there uh, she also makes kind of vintage inspired garments inspired by kind of film stars and like Hollywood actresses of, you know, of the era that she's making from, which I, I love when she does that. Uh, she recently made this beautiful cape out of this faux fur, which was stunning with a tea dress underneath in a blush pink, similar to this colour. Oh, amazing. Anyway, oh, so... After making this in the blush and seeing how well it goes with some of my clothes I already have, this blush pink is surprisingly goes with a lot of things. Sorry, let's just 
check in the focus there. So I thought that I would make, I, I don't know if you call it a Miss Marple scarf or an Ascot scarf. I'll put the link below. I have made it before and when I made it before it was much narrower. I made it much bigger this time. I haven't woven in the ends yet. Um, but Miss, Miss Marple, the character by Agatha Christie, in the films she often wears these so it's just a little scarf with one side has got um a little opening and then you just cross them over and i just think they're beautiful yes they are a granny scarf they are certainly absolutely a granny scarf and i don't care i think the fact that it's i've made it kind of jumbo sized Kind of slightly modernizes it a little bit and because i've made it so wide i like that because you can just fold it over and then you're getting that extra squish and that extra coverage on the neck so um yeah if you're interested in having a look i will link below it will take you to ravelry and one of my pictures is the picture of the pattern um, it's a really, really old pattern, so it's, there's no like copyright issues there for me putting it up. Um, and you start on one end and cast on a couple stitches and you increase till you get the width that you wanted. So I did more than what the pattern suggested. I just kept holding it up and thinking, eh, a little bit more, mm, a little bit more. Um, then you do some just straight knitting. And then it tells you how to make this little fun opening by splitting your stitches. Um, it's a really good beginner's pattern because you learn a few little techniques, but none of them are massively complicated. Um, the increases that I used at the beginning was uh, knit the front and back of each stitch, which I think is the easiest increase. Um, what are the stitches? Knits. So you cast on, there's knits, uh, knit front and back of each of the stitch, um, knit two togethers are included in the pattern and splitting these stitches on to two different needles. So you knit the front and then slip onto a holder on the back, knit on the front, slip on the holder on the back, which is how you create like two, you create those two instead of one you're just separating your stitches i do realize they're not quite the same <laughs> not quite this one is got that beautiful dusty like gray tone to the pink and this one is got that little bit more peach but you know i eh, don't care i just happen to be in my local abacan craft shop um i happen to see this Hayfield bonus DK. It was just a big ball shade 614. So it's 100% acrylic, I'm sure. Let's have a look. 100% acrylic. I know a lot of people don't like acrylic. I kind of don't really know why. I know that some acrylics are not very nice, but then some wools are not very nice, some silks are not very nice. It's just kind of what you're looking for in the product that you're using and some things work better for others. Um, this says that it's machine washable and tumble dryerable. Wow, so that's good. That That's quite good for things like that would go around your neck because you do, they, they can get quite grubby, can't they? Anyway, oh yeah, also a different thing I did with the pattern. When you've finished um, and you're putting them together again, you're meant to reduce the number of stitches. I, I just knit one in the front, knit one in the back, knit one in the front, knit one in the back. So from one from each, um, each needle, because you, you'll have the front on one needle and the back on another needle. And the pattern actually doesn't want you to do that. The pattern wants you to reduce the number of stitches, but I wanted it to come out quite wide. Uh, otherwise, 
think you lose a third, so it would have been that wide. And I just I wanted that really thick middle. Looks like a Christmas cracker. <laughs> anyway, um, I love these scarves. I love that Miss Marple wears them too because she is a classy broad. We love Miss Marple. Um, and when you're wearing it, it's actually really nice with a big brooch. So if you're a brooch wearer and you need somewhere to put your brooches, not only can you put them, I think I've seen people put them on their on their berets. Like jauntily on the side, not in the middle, that would probably look a bit weird. Flat bit to the side. But that would be perfect, just on your, on the middle there. Yeah, I'd like it in the middle. Anyway, that was just a fun little knit. That took me two evenings to make that. And um, yeah, very beginner friendly um, item. Obviously the pattern is a vintage pattern, so if I were new to knitting, which I was when I first ever knit these, I didn't know any of this knit together, slip stitches, any of them, did not know any of it. So anytime a new, like when you're reading the pattern, anytime a, uh, something I didn't recognize came up, like slip, slip, knit, or K2 tog. What's a K2 tog when you don't know how to knit? A K2 tog? Who knows? It's knit two together. How do you knit two together? I just jump onto, um, very pink knits on YouTube. Her videos are spectacular. And that's just how I kind of knit my first few bits and pieces. So that that is fun. But also when you're knitting small accessories, very good for beginners because first it's a DK weight yarn instead of a very fine yarn. So they knit up quite quickly. A four millimeter needle is very good to start with because I think it's not too massive, but it's not like feels very pin like. It feels like a, a good starting point. Um, also it's an accessory so you don't have that like massive mountain to, to knit like it's quite a small thing and if it goes wrong rip it out and do it again it's not a major not a major problem yeah oh I've been doing a bit of gift knitting so I do want to do a few bits and pieces for Lila's Christmas presents so I knit her an Otter Ferry cardigan um, I do okay I think I was a little bit harsh about the pattern the last time I talked about this pattern I was very confused the first time I knit it I just I was expecting it to be knit like in one piece and it was not it was knit in pieces and seamed I didn't expect that I didn't know I was knitting it top down or bottom up I didn't know because the pattern didn't tell me but it doesn't mean that it's a bad pattern it's a beautiful pattern the uh, fisherman's rib is super squishy and I knit this in, I think it's one to two, one to two year size. Um, oh, it's so cute. And the colour is Pied Piper in the Serdar Snuggly Cash Merino Silk DK. And for this size, I needed four balls. They're 50 grams each, so that was 200 grams. Pied Piper. I need, to have a little, I need to have a research what the Pied Piper is. Is it from a nursery rhyme? The only reference I'm getting is from a, like a murder TV show when the they use the Pied Piper in like a really creepy, <laughs> murdery way. So yeah. Um, yes, the murdered cardigan. I haven't put the buttons on yet. I just have blocked it. I really like this yarn. Was it on sale? Yeah, it was on sale. I bought it on sale, so it was much cheaper. It was actually quite a pricey yarn, but on sale it wasn't too bad. And um, yeah, I like I like this uh, seafoam colour because you know eyeball matching. You know I like an eyeball match. <laughs> Lila has my eyes. In fact, my Lila is just like my photocopy, which is hilarious. I look at these pictures of me when I was a baby. It just looks like my baby. Very strange. Poor JC hadn't got, he hasn't had a look in. Maybe she'll get curly hair. I'm hoping for curls. She'll have his curls maybe. Anyway, very nice um, knit. I do really like the end result and it's super squishy. It just did take a little bit of concentration. So yeah, not much to say about it. I just, I really wanted to make her a few things for Christmas. So my daughter is now seven months old. 
she's not going to remember this Christmas, but that doesn't mean I don't want to give her a nice Christmas. So I'm going to make her a few bits and pieces from me. And then I think Father Christmas uh, will probably bring her one gift down the chimney and probably her daddy will buy her one thing and um, then a few family members I'm sure will send I know my auntie will send something and my sister so yeah that's a really nice knit I have also knit this um as a as a gift and this time I knit it where's the where's the ball bug Where's it gone? It's gone. It's gone. The show must go on. Anyway, uh, it's knit in on the screen. Uh, the yarn base that is recommended by the designer Rainer and Bear. So when she used to knit the items and sell them as items rather as patterns, this was what she would use. And I thought it was very on brand. Uh, it's for a little boy and he's only just been born so he'll be very tiny and this will be massive but this will fit him in the late winter early spring it's a cotton i don't know if you can see the stitch definition is fantastic in cotton and so open whereas in this wool blend cashmere whatchamacallit those do not look to me like the same stitch like these are super closed and these are beautifully open i much prefer it in the cotton i actually think that is fantastic but cotton is not that fun to knit with sorry i've got a rogue hair Oof. Yeah, it's not that fun to knit with. Oh, I just want to show you why. So that it was quite interesting. So that's the one that I knit Lila's in, the wool cashmere, and it bounces. And most of the yarns that I use, wools, even acrylics, they bounce. I don't know if that came across on the screen, but it bounced. This cotton. It just doesn't like nothing happens it's just very there's no bounce no bounce so it's very strange when you're knitting it um it's just a different feel in your hands it doesn't feel rough to the touch or anything but it just feels different anyway that will fit late winter early spring and Cotton is a really good option, I think, for that time. And I just popped to the craft shop and found literally the only wooden buttons that they had. My craft shop seems to love a comedy button. They love a comedy button. Now, I'm not saying I don't like a comedy button. There is a time and a place. I bought some very beautiful ladybird buttons recently, some apples, some flowers, but they are for children's wear garments. You know, not and not all children need, you know, this is this is for an elegant baby. I can just tell he's going to be elegant because his mummy is elegant and it's just going to be very chic. And I didn't pick the blue because it's a boy. I picked the blue just because I thought it was very brand appropriate and I thought it would go with like loads of neutral colours. So, yeah, I knit them on the same needles and... Um, The reason why they'd come out a bit small was I've knit them twice in this cashmere wool, whatever. Um, it bounces and kind of bounces into itself. So it's very squishy, but it makes it look a lot smaller. Whereas the cotton, it didn't even need to stretch that out when I was blocking it. It just naturally knits up like that. And this one has actually been blocked and stretched and it still barely can see the lines. Anyway, I mention that because I just never thought how much of a difference uh, a fibre could make. Um, and it does, it makes a really big difference, the fibre that you choose. So 
I'm, I did learn my lesson a long time ago with alpaca. Alpaca is really not for me because it stretches and grows and it's really heavy. No, it's not for me. Not my favourite alpaca. It, um, yeah, uh, but cotton. Yep, yeah, really like it. Just kind of something to be aware of that it will knit up different. So if I was going to knit something again in that, I would definitely need to swatch for it if it was a garment for me. I didn't swatch for children's garments because I figure I'm already making it a bigger size than the child is. So worst case scenario, if it comes out too small, which it never would come out too small. I'm a loose knitter, but let's say it did come out too small. It would just fit them sooner. And if it comes out bigger, well, eh, you just wait a little bit longer to wear it. So that's fine. Or oh, more gift, more gift making. If you watched my vlogs last year, you'll know I made stockings for my family. Well, now my sister's, my sister's family, are now having um, stockings. I thought I thought this would be a nice gift. Like, I didn't want to spend a huge amount of money on presents, and my sister is very generous. She's overly generous. She's generous to the extreme where you feel a bit embarrassed. <laughs> I would not want to open presents in front of other people like where she opened my presents and I opened hers because I would just be mortified that she's gone so extravagant and I'd just been like not ungenerous I'd made a nut made or bought a nice gift but hers are just like <sighs> amazing so I can't be competing by buying her something spectacular so I wanted to make her something because she doesn't make she doesn't sew she doesn't knit she doesn't really do anything crafty but she really appreciates crafts she is a great lover of handmade things and she's she is very um knit worthy or sew worthy whatever she does appreciate them I said to her what's your Christmas theme she said what do you mean it's like, what's your Christmas theme? Like, my Christmas theme is kind of an atomic Christmas. It's got the 1950s colours. So, like, I like the, um, we've got this, like, mini tinsel tree, which is silver. And then we've got um, quite a lot of bright colours. So we've got the reds and, you know, some, some of the classic greens, but not in that Victorian way. Um, it's got, like, it's very, like, nutcracker and it's got turquoise and fuchsia pink and it's fun and very childlike she's like oh yeah me too okay didn't know that she would know that reference but okay didn't know she knew anything about the 50s but okay so do you have any decorations you can send me any pictures you can send me so she sent me a few pictures no the the pictures that she sent me of these ornaments none of them matched none none of them matched that was not a theme. What are you thinking? Theme. Her theme is just Christmas. Like anything Christmassy, this part of the theme. My Jason did agree that Christmas can be a theme. I very much disagree. I disagree. Christmas is not a theme. Christmas is an occasion. You pick your theme, you know, do you like classic red and green Christmas with a real tree, very elegant? Or do you go with like that, that Swedish kind of very simplified you know the white stars and the wooden beads very simplified very elegant or do you go with like just like ah, crazy christmas with a bit of everything that's what my 90s christmas was very for me and my sister was very much just everything with a lot of santas a lot of santa everything had santa on it, it had to have santa on it anyway I felt like I needed to tell you that story so that you didn't think that I thought those three things went together because I don't. <laughs> but she picked the fabrics. So, of course, I adore the Nutcracker fabric. I've been making bags out of the Nutcracker fabrics and she picked that independently. I, did, I didn't tell her I was using that fabric. That's for her. Paulie, her partner, picked this, which I'll fondly refer to as a lumberjack. Christmas. It's got that Fair Isle look, but it's got that orange tone with the uh, forest green, which I feel gives it that kind of lumberjack masculine quality. And then for Mia Rose, she's got this gingerbread, 
which is not very bold. It's a little bit insipid in its colour palette. So I thought I would jazz that one up with a bright, just to give it a pop. And Caroline is a blue girl, so she's got hers with a blue top. So I was hoping that even though these three colours don't go, the fact that they are all the same shape and size of stocking, they've not been pressed or anything yet, um, and the fact that they'll have different colour tops but in bold colours once I've made them and stitched them all on, I was hoping that they would look cohesive. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Bless her. I did try and help her with the colour um, with the colour matching. So I sent her a link to two different um, online shops that sell quilting cottons that I use and she chose a few different combos. This selection of, of, of fabrics was was the most <laughs> the most matching of all the combos she chose. Bless her. And she wants to have other children so I've still got the pattern and then hopefully we just pick random fabrics that she likes but yeah bless her bless her little sweetie pie they've not been pressed or anything yet but i've um stitched the names so paulie caroline and mia rose i hope i need to finish them in the next few days because they need to go out in the post Making something for like a neighbour or someone you see all the time or like a relative that lives close is one thing. Making something for someone who lives on the other side of the planet is very stressful. The Australian Post, I don't really know much about it, but it seems like it's taking a very long time to get to people. Um, at the moment, their post is getting out of the UK to their country, uh, which last year it wasn't. Things weren't even leaving the UK. They were just stacking up in warehouses. But yes, stuff's coming out of the UK now, but is getting stuck in other countries. So yeah, I hope she's going to like them. I also need to make one for my own daughter, but I haven't even ordered her fabric. Sorry, I keep touching my eye. There's definitely like a fluff somewhere. Oh, yes. Oh, there it is. The Rowan. Well, I'll order it. I will already have put it on the screen, but it's always nice to see. I like to see the labels doesn't even give me a name how shade 239 I like to know the name I love it when they give it a whimsical name like with nail polishes the world is a better place when nail polish has a fun color don't you agree don't you agree no I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to show you oh uh, I'm wearing one <laughs> I'm wearing one elephant in the room so I'm going to have to put in some footage. I did take some footage already um, of me wearing it and it's a really great layerable piece. So I'll show you that, that bit of footage. Um, where it, I wore it to the uh, railway in Aberystwyth in Wales and um, I wore it with one of my knits on top and with my beret and just swanned about. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, but you can't really see the top, so I will have to show you a bit of the top.
so I use this book. This book is a Gertie book, which if you've watched for any length of time, you'll know I love Gertie. That is Gertie. Um, these sewing books are a really great beginner's way um, of learning to sew because you get an envelope full of all your patterns um, and then you get loads of information about sewing, about different techniques and then it tells you all about each garment that you can sew from the patterns and the adjustments you can make. Um, so it's a really fabulous way of sewing. This is just the Gertie one and she's got quite a few. She's got a casual book, which I've got. She's got a dresses book. These are jiffy dresses, um, which are based on like 1950s dresses, I think, like really quick to sew. There was a trend at the time of really quick to sew patterns of patterns that you could sew in the morning and then wear them to lunch, which I very much doubt that that was happening. I would feel very stressed deciding to make a dress in the morning to wear for brunch with a friend. <laughs> I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> Don't you think? Anyway. Um, so many brands. Tilly and the Buttons must be one of the most popular ones of this kind of thing. Um, loads of brands have them. If you know that you like the style of um, a pattern company's brand and they do a book like this, it's, it's a really affordable way of getting a few patterns and um, usually all the patterns are mix and match so if there's a bodice and if there's a few bodice blocks a few skirts a few sleeves usually you can mix them all together and kind of hack them to make something that you want so if anyone was ever thinking of sewing and they can't have a look Tilly and the Buttons is a really good one because um, they're very modern she does make things she styles them in a bit of a 60s way well, she did originally when she first started um but there's a lot there's just she's got loads of patterns they're really very easy sews very beginner friendly not massively size inclusive though her biggest size is not as big as it could be considering how easy they are i do understand when pattern companies don't go quite as large as i think they should when they're very complicated very fitted garments because they are more difficult to grade not that that's an excuse, but that is a fact they are more difficult to grade. When you're making very simplified garments, I'm not sure there's really an excuse because they can be they can just be graded. Like even just send them to a graders and they can be graded by machine. That's just my opinion, actually. Anyway, let me show you the pattern I used. So, the patio dress. All I used was this bodice pattern and then I just rounded the neck off and cut off the um, collar. That's all I did. And then whatever fabric I had left after cutting the bodice, I made a skirt. And it's literally all I did. It was very easy to do. The only difficulty I had in making this dress was that I like a diamond more than I like a square. A little bit of uh, shape discrimination there, but there we go. Um, and I thought it would be more flattering having them, the, the, the lines kind of crossing in that way, which is true. However, it meant that the bodice is cut on the bias and cutting something on the bias, which is just cutting it wonky on purpose, <laughs> um, needs that it's really unstable and um, the garment ended up you know, really nice, really wearable, and I have worn it quite a few times, but trying to get it cut evenly was a nightmare. So like with the darts, they sit in different locations on the print. So here on the dart, you've got this quite nice um, matching up on the dart, and on this one, they don't match up. That's not, that's not because my darts are in different places, that's just because doesn't matter how I lay my pieces on the fabric it just was the pattern was not matching um so that is a shame that is a shame but so I didn't match it up anywhere I would often 
match things on a sleeve, which I didn't do. I would often match things on the side seam, which also I didn't do. Um, but I just wanted that look of the bodice to be on the bias, to have those diamonds. And the same on the back. I did, the only place I matched it was on the centre back when I did a lapped zip. And I did a lapped zip purely for matching purposes. There was no way that I would get an invisible zip or concealed zip to have the left and right matching at each individual point. There's just no way because it would it would have taken me such a long time and a lot of tacking and a lot of pinning and it just even with all that it still wouldn't have been spot on and i knew that if i did this lap zip the way in which you make a lap zip is you you're stitching it whilst looking from the top rather than from the inside and it just meant that i could match up that print or oh, you can see it oh that much yeah um yeah i'm very happy with it it's very wearable the skirt is a little bit heavy because it's it is a wool um got a nice facing there on the hem i do like a facing um, it is a little bit weighty because of the amount of fabric i've got in the hem so what I think I might do is I might pop a little inside belt at the waist. I was going to use a grow grain, but I don't have one in the correct width. The colour wouldn't have mattered, but I don't have one of the correct width. I would need a three quarter inch, maybe a one inch. But the narrow is better for me. And you would just make a belt that's quite tight fitting, maybe with two settings where you could have one hook that's... um. On the tighter side and maybe one a little bit looser just in case it's always nice to have the option and just stitch it on the inside uh, to the seam allowance and i've done that quite a few times in the past mainly i've done that when i've sewn for clients uh, with evening wear so if a dress is very tight which with evening wear sometimes you would especially if it's that 50 silhouette of a really tight bodice and then a massive skirt that waist needs to be very fitted so if you put that waist belt in um, as you're putting it on, you can really easily zip it up because it's holding your waist in place uh, rather than having to like try and have like two or three people like squeezing you. <laughs> so that's quite handy um, for that reason. Easier to zip up. Also, if your dress is heavy because it's beaded, some beaded dresses with glass beads are very heavy. Or like my dress is quite heavy because the skirt's full. If you pop your dress on and then hook that waist, it just anchors it to your waist point and it just means it's not going to slip down. It's not going to fall forwards and backwards. You're not going to feel like you want to kind of keep adjusting your dress. Um, of course, this only really would be the case if the waist of the dress is fitted. Um only real reason you would want to squish the waist in <laughs> but it has been it has been handy uh, quite a few times and considering that you only really need a bit of ribbon and some hooks and just to stitch it to the inside seam allowance um, it's very effective considering it's such a simple simple thing so yeah just some depending on how I'm sitting sometimes I feel the dress wants to move forward or wants to move back and I wear it with a belt but sometimes I feel like it wants to sit like this or like the back you see how the back is slipping down it's not actually the belt that's moving my leather belt it's actually the dress is shifting depending on how I move now I know if I put that little inner belt in there it will not do that it will sit on my waist much better so yeah, just a just a little idea there. Um, I do have a, a few vanilla socks that I'm working on, but nothing really worth sharing. And I'm still trying to get through this black, um, this black polo neck I've been working on for ages. I'm just very rarely working on it. Like it's covered in fluff. Oh gosh, the 
think I live in an absolute pigsty. The amount of fluff that's on every dark thing I own. I'm not going to pick it off. Anyway, I know that this is going to be so handy to have in my wardrobe, but the problem is it's just so dull. <gasps> so dull. And it's on quite a short needle for knitting, like the cable. Cable is actually quite short, which I like. It means that it zips around really quickly. But for me to try it on, it means that I need to take wind off this, wind off my needle, put the extra cable on there, then try it on. And also, I don't have anything to wear on my bottom half to go with this that fits me. So I think maybe that's why I've been dithering. Usually if I have a garment that I know I'm going to wear with something else, I'll try it on as I'm making it. You know, when you're just getting to the end of a project, I just want to put it on and check that it's sitting on the right place. So if I was going to pull out a pair of trousers, which I know I would like to wear, I have a slim fit cigarette trouser uh, in a kind of brown houndstooth. Very cool. Um, they were from the um, elderly lady section in Marks and Spencers. <laughs> it's not called the elderly lady section. It's called, I think it's called Classics. Um, but yeah. Um, they just don't fit me. But I would, I would if I was going to wear them with that and they did fit me. I'd put them on and I'd put that knit on and I'd just check in the mirror it was sitting where I wanted it to sit. And then I would know how much further to knit or if it was ready to stop but because I don't have anything to wear with it at the moment I'm a little bit torn do I cast it off when I think I need to do I wait it doesn't matter uh, I don't feel stressed having that project just kind of sleeping slightly to the side I've done a little bit of work on it so now I think I'm at that point where I want to cast it off but I'm not sure so I might try it on I could pull those trousers out and see if they fit but I don't think they will and nothing ruins a day quite like putting on a garment that doesn't fit you. There's no right time of day to do that. It's just ruin the day. Absolutely ruin the day. Just me. For sure. However, if it did fit, that would be a glorious day. I don't even know why it matters. It absolutely does not matter whether that garment fits me or not. If it fits me, great. If it doesn't fit me, I'll wait a little bit longer, see if it fits me later in the year. If not, I'll have to replace it and just upgrade my wardrobe with a, a different item. And I know that, but still it feels a bit depressing. I don't really have anything. I'm just looking. I've got my ironing board set out here with just a few um, of my makes to show you. So I'll hopefully be back soon. What's my next garment I want to work on? I want to make a few more gifts for Lila, but I don't have any patterns in mind. And mm, oh, I do want to make a little white blouse. But again, I have nothing to wear on the bottom half. It's very annoying. I have all these little things I want to make, but nothing to wear them with. Maybe I just bite the bullet and get something for the moment that will fit me on the bottom. So at least I can wear those fun, uh, those fun little tops that I've got. I'm wittering on, you know when I'm wittering that um, it's time to finish the podcast. Not a massively long podcast today. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I hopefully see you soon. Um, yeah, enjoy the autumn while it lasts. In the UK we've been having a really beautiful autumn this year. Well in Shropshire we have and um, we're going on another little adventure tomorrow. I will put at the end now uh, some footage of where we've been and what we've been up to which is with me and my Jason and my little Lila our little Lila. Um, he's been taking footage of me walking in the woods and things um, specifically for you so wherever we go oh we've got to take a bit of footage for all your podcast friends okay so that is all from him pop it on the end and I hope you like it maybe with a little whimsical music see you soon bye
blue sheep. Look, there's an orange one. A bit of a limp, that one. That was fun. <laughs>